I'm going to do this uh, in English as well. Um, I believe that probably our most wasted resource in the world today is all the people living in our cities, our villages, our towns. There's so much passion, there's so much know-how, there's, so there's so much of everything. And it's not being used, it's not being utilised properly. When we work with sustainable empowerment platforms, what we're trying to do, our vision, is to involve so many people in the decision-making processes as possible. And what we try to do is to remove all the barriers to that. So it's those two things that we're primarily working with. There is, I believe that this is the job of civil servants, of governments today, but unfortunately this doesn't happen. What is happening today in the world is that we're reducing the amount of people who are making the decisions, and it makes for poorer decisions, less informed decisions. So we're trying to do something to reverse that. One of the first things that we did was Bundeseger Marknad. This was the first uh, branded farmer's market in the world. And branding it was very, very important because it meant the people that who were involved in the farmer's market had an opportunity to control the value that they actually created. It's a bit of an institution now. There's 18 farmer's markets over the whole country. And it seems like it's a, a, a very sort of clear, obvious thing to do. But at the time, it wasn't. The National Farmers Union said to us, markets, they don't work anymore. You have to go wholesale. You have to large stores, etc." And um, the farmers themselves were in complete disagreement. The organic farmers didn't want to stand beside the conventional ones. The biodynamic farmers didn't want anything to do with anybody. Uh, <laughs> the local... Uh, <laughs> The local uh, shopkeepers thought that this was going to be stealing food from them. They actually sold more. The local town, the local town planners and civil servants said, we're only allowed to have a market for three weekends in a row. Nobody could explain to us why this was, <laughs> but that was how it was. We managed to get around that by starting a pilot project because civil servants love pilot projects. They could do an evaluation and uh, the thing became permanent. Uh, we had problems all over the place, but we solved them by getting all these different actors together and they were allowed to talk and communicate and we solved a lot of the physical problems as well. On the first weekend, 10,000 people turned up. The farmers were sold out of all their produce. And a lot of interesting things started happening when we created this empowerment platform. There was a transference of knowledge for a start. There was uh, one farmer who said, what am I going to say when I go into town? You know, I just... I sit on my own and I do all this farming. I've got nothing interesting to say to the people in the cities. <laughs> when he turned up, he never stopped talking. Everything that <laughs> he knew was a little piece of fantastic knowledge for the people in the city, and he communicated his knowledge. I saw an old lady, a grandmother, who was there with her daughter, and she was trying to convince her to eat a tomato. She was going to try this little tomato, and her, daughter, her granddaughter was saying, I hate tomatoes. Tomatoes are horrible. And eventually, she tasted this tomato, and she looks up with big eyes at her grandmother and says, this isn't a tomato. <laughs> and it wasn't the usual tomato that she would taste in a supermarket. So she got this knowledge as well. There were lots of incredible things happening uh, at the farmer's market. And what people said to me afterwards was, John, this is so un-Swedish. This is so almost French. And I thought, <laughs> Swedish farmers selling Swedish vegetables to Swedish consumers in the middle of Södermalm. It can't be more Swedish than this. <laughs> but the point is that all these things were just waiting to come up to the surface just by creating a platform where all these different people could meet. Now, um, we started talking with people after the farmer's market and saying, what are the problems with the farmer's market? Because it doesn't go the whole way. And people decided they wanted more of a 24-7 experience, 365 days of the year. So we've come up with a thing called Drum Gordon. And Drum Gordon will be Sweden's first consumer-owned uh, organic farm with five eco villages and about 10,000 members. And the whole idea with Drum Gordon is, is that you will have the opportunity to invest and become a part of sustainability and the countryside according to your own needs and your own wallet. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be finding a place just outside of Stockholm. We've got two sites that we're negotiating on just now. And it's going to be the typical Swedish countryside with that little bit of something different and new and unusual with it. And what we're going to be doing is to be gathering 
all food experts, all farmers and food experts in the area, bringing in food experts to be able to work with it. So the whole thing will be, if you like, a, a NAV, a center uh, for organic produce. Our goal is to the, be the biggest producer of uh, organic food in the greater Stockholm area, in Melodala. And thank you. And then what we do is we throw in a load of other people, environmental technology companies. Uh, we have help from the Center for Alternative Technology, uh, cooks, uh, the whole aspect, so that whenever you're in a house, it's a platform for the latest uh, uh, technology, environmental sustainable technology. Whenever you're producing your cheese, they're also thinking about how they're going to be creating a zero carbon footprint. We throw all of these people together and Together, we create a plan for how we want to experience the countryside and how we want to push sustainability. And the whole idea, basically, is you can invest in the countryside and in sustainability in any way that you like. You can be part owner in the farm, part owner in your own house. You can be there for seven weeks. You can be there for seven months, according to your own needs and desires. You can be part owner in a dairy, a cheese, horse, you name it, whatever. And when you become part owner in something, you have responsibility for it as well. You become involved in a different way. We can design our own houses, we can do what we want. I am going to be living in my own Hobbit house. <laughs> and I'm going to build a Hobbit pub as well. Uh, and uh, so that, that's one of my dreams. And it's completely sustainable. Um, so this is on the go now. And, and that's the way we've been working with sort of town and land. One of our other projects is called Wasted Space. And if, if you're around in cities, you will see that there are tons of wasted spaces everywhere. There are buildings that are not being used, and a large majority of them actually owned by the government or by ourselves. There's, it's our taxpayers' money which is sustaining these unused buildings. And uh, we create an agreement with the city of Stockholm. We're going to take four of these spaces, and we're going to create a new use for them, and we're going to do it together uh, with the local population so that they can become involved in the development process, which is completely opposite to the way that it's done uh, presently. Um, there's lots of smaller places and there's larger places. One of the smaller places that we're going to be working on is this water tower over at Holman. It hasn't been used for years and years, and our idea is to turn it into a one-room hotel uh, where you can live in a part of Stockholm's cultural, historical, uh, uh, cultural history. You can uh, stay there overnight. It's got a fantastic uh, big platform at the top where you look out over the whole of... Uh, the whole of the city. And uh, we're working actually on this tomorrow and working together with a, a fantastic group of people. Uh, we've got architects, we've got tourist advisors, we've got the city, we've got a whole group of people who are coming together. Um, and this is when the, the process works positively. When it works negatively, we get this. There's a crane and a chapel out of Beckholm. We've been trying to speak to the local civil servants now for a year we can't get to see them. This is the only originally placed crane in Stockholm. It's rotting. It's falling apart. I went up there and nearly fell off the thing. There was bits of crane falling all over the place when I went up to photograph these pictures. But again, it could be a fantastic way of sustaining something which is beautiful and culturally important to our city. But in this case, we can't get to the dialogue. Uh, we're not going to give up. I mean, eventually, the guys are going to have to speak to us sooner or later. But um, this is just to show you that, you know, whenever we sit down and we talk and we get a large group of different actors, we can move very, very quickly and come to fantastic solutions. When it doesn't happen, everything stands still. We're also working with larger areas. We did a few weeks ago uh, Sweden's first community planning where we pulled in the local population in Hornsbrook's garden and put them together with architects, environmental advisors, a whole group of different people to try and look at a development on it. Our particular interest in this street is this particular building. This was voted Stockholm's ugliest building two years on the trot. And uh, I quite like it. But um, anyway, it's the, it's the ugliest building. And uh, it's a very dirty building as well. It's got a lot of pollution and different things happening in it. And when we talked to the local population, they came up with a number of ideas. One of them was to green the building, to bring the park, there's a fantastic park there, over the top of the building. And so uh, this is what we uh, hope to and plan to do. They also wanted to put a greenhouse on top of the building as well that could be powered by the heat coming up from the tube station, which is another thing we think is an absolutely fantastic idea and something that we want to work with. 
The city tube authorities have been sitting on this building, it's been abandoned for like 12 years, and haven't come up with any of these ideas. But you get a group of people with different disciplines coming together, and all of a sudden a vision like this can be created. So this is what we're going to be working on with. My favourite project at the moment, though, is an empowerment project in just this area. I live in Hornstall here as well, and I think if you're going to start doing empowerment projects, you can't go to people in the world and say, you should be sustainable over there, and you should do this, this and that. You really have to start where you live, where you work, in your own area, and provide a good example uh, yourself. So this project, 100 House, Watch Your Neighbourhood Express Itself, is my declaration of love for Hornstall. And when you live in an area, an area, it ceases to be just streets and doors and windows. There's a story, there's a life behind them. And I, if you live in a local area, you begin to know that story. So our idea was that story should be able to uh, be shown, uh, that it should become visible. So what we decided to do was to take, here's Hornstall, for those who don't know Hornstall. What we decided to do was to take 60 of Sweden's top artists, put them on the web. Every house gets to pick their own artist. The artist interviews the house and creates a permanent work of art on the side of the house that mirrors the people's dreams, visions, and values. We have a number of these works of art that are coming up now. Some of them are big, some of them are small. One of them is the whole side of two houses where they've actually put some crystals into the, uh, into the they changed the side of the house and they're going to be putting a light show on it, so the whole of the side is, of the house is going to be sort of glimmering, sort of like some huge house disco ball, uh, if you like. Uh, another in the group, uh, Film Centrum, just outside here, they're going to be um, uh, creating the Hornstall Walk of Fame, where people can vote on uh, who is, is their local heroes, and then there'll be lots of stars, just like Hollywood, uh, going all up the street. Uh, and they're some of the bigger uh, events. I like the fact that they're mixed up with a lot of the smaller things. We've got this one here. Here's Gunnar's Love Temple. And this was an old sort of telephone connection box. And Gunnar lives in this house where he says, it's just so nice in my house. Everybody's really lovey with each other. And I wanted to communicate that to the rest of the area. So what he decided to do was to paint up this love temple. And the idea is that when everybody's on their way down to the pub uh, in the area, all the bars, they can make a little offering in the love temple and maybe they get a bit of luck. Uh, in the bar. <laughs> and uh, so that's Gunnar's Love Temple. And when we talked to the local population, because we had to talk to all the houses in the area, what happened was they came up with other ideas and they wanted to tell their stories. So we educated a load of 12-year-olds from the local school to go out and to film and to interview people in the local area. And now there are loads of signs everywhere, there's about 40 of them in the area, where you can ring a telephone number hear a story about the place you're standing told by the person from the local area who experienced it. When we talked to local people as well though, they said 50% of all the houses in the area said, we want to create a sustainable haunch tool. That was their desire. And this is what came out of this uh, dialogue with the area, with getting all these different people together. So what we decided to do, we had to scratch our heads for a little bit because the project kept expanding, you know, uh, every time we asked somebody something. And so we said, how are we going to deal with this? So what we decided to do, we've now got 21 environmental technology companies. And each environmental technology company sponsors a house with solar panels, with whatever. And the effect to the environment is shown by a permanent work of art on the side of the house. So there's the communication, there's the the actual environmental technology gets working. There's a whole number of, act uh, of, of different things that can start uh, happening through this. Uh, here is one of them. Here is a, uh, this isn't done yet, this is just in the planning stage, but here is a light receptor that takes in light through a fiber optic that goes into a sort of a, a place here that doesn't get any sun, and then to make it sort of visible, somebody writes sunlight sole use on it. There's a whole load of different things going on. The church is planning to put solar panels on their roof. That's really going to cause a debate, which we welcome. Um, uh, so there's a whole load of fantastic things going on in the area. We hope 21 works of art are going to be up. When we first, uh, 21 works of art just from the, uh, the environmental technology side, there'll be other works of art as well. So all in all, we hope 50 or 60 houses will have this expression on the s outside 
making a statement that sustainability is what we want, to express ourselves is what we want, to tell our stories is what we want. When we first went to the city council, to the culture department, and talked about this project, they didn't give us any money. And the person who was in charge of it said, do you really think local people can judge what good art is? <laughs> well, I sat there and I thought, well, yes, actually. And uh, it's actually your job to be involving the local people in the city, uh, you know, in the project. We didn't get any money off them what, year one. We actually got money from private companies, property developers in the area, who saw the value of it. So it's putting all these different groups together has created this dynamic project. We go back to this building one more time because now we've got 21 environmental technology companies who are going to be going together for when we develop this house to put the latest environmental technology in it. These are all small and medium large companies who don't place in any of the big developments in the city. We've got Nora Jurgård Stad, okay? Hardly any of these companies are involved in it and they're prize winning companies. And the reason they're not involved is because civil servants, get together with a few builders and decide this is the way we're going to do it. And they're saying that this is going to be the most environmentally, technologically advanced place in Stockholm. Not a chance. This place is going to be the most environmentally advanced place in Stockholm. <laughs> and it's because we're involving a wide range of people into the decision-making process. So. What I'd like to leave you with is we actually have everything we need to make change. I believe that people are totally switched on to change. The problem is they don't know what first steps to take. Through our empowerment pro projects, what we do is to try and help remove all the blocks to that happening. So we've got everything we need as long as we use it properly and we do it together. Thank you very much.